Yes. Let's begin. Welcome to session three of SEMP revision. In this session, I am now starting with new topic: cost of quality and total quality management (TQM). Yes, cost of quality and total quality management. <clears throat> what are the steps in total quality management? First, identification of customer. Identification of customer expectations, identification of customer decision making requirements and product utility, identification of perceived problems in decision making process and product utility. In all these four steps, one, two, three, four put together, you are trying to identify what exactly is needed on the other side. The other side is your customer side. Identify who are your buyers, understand what they expect from you understand how they decide before buying your product whether to buy your product or somebody's product and if they are rejecting your product and buying somebody's product what is the reason what is the problem that they are facing why are they not willing to buy your product yeah comparison with other organization and benchmarking that is the next step once you know that they are rejecting your product and buying some other product then understand people want your product to be like the other product customer feedback talk to them understand those who have purchased your goods in the past if they are not happy what is the reason identification of improvement opportunities once you take feedback you'll obviously get to know where are you behind where are you lacking accordingly you can <clears throat> take the decision that is quality improvement process through determination of new strategy elimination of deficiencies and identification identifying the solution so most important part in tqm implementation is the concept of price mark this important any theory question on tqm you can explain this <clears throat> first problem identification that is p that is what i have explained just now in point number 1 2 3 4 also problem identification ranking suppose there are seven problems why customers are not buying your products because they are having issues with the quality of the product and how many complaints there you have there are seven varieties of complaints some people are not happy with this that etc etc like this there are seven problems then rank them that is rank them in the order of most important problem to least important problem analyze are those points connected why is it happening what is the reason go back to your production floor find out if there is any mistake that you are making the production or are we not testing it properly in our quality assurance department why is it happening analyze next innovate that is now that you know what is the root cause of the problem bring in some new technique new idea bring in process innovation and then implement that as a solution in your organization and evaluate that is once in a month once in two months once in three months you have to see whether the problem that you tried solving two months back whether you have been really successful in that or not so again i repeat price p r a i s e problem identification ranking them analyzing them innovating finding the solution and implementing that and finally evaluate whether it is all happening as per your expectations or not for smooth price implementation move from small to big issues take solvable problems recognize the participants lot of the times companies will be spending too much of time and resource in solving small 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 problems but all those small problems are because of one big problem yeah and if you solve that one big problem most of these small problems will get resolved automatically therefore tqm believes that you first solve that is why you have to why ranking why did they give that as a second point that you have to identify the problems don't try to solve every problem in one go from the most important now when i say the most important they are referring to those big issues and if you solve the big issues first then all the small issues will get sorted out for example employees do not know how to do a particular task one employee was not aware so you 
you know, gave him a training. Then two days later, you realized some employees who were given training also were not doing properly. And then you got to know the training is only helping them for one type of activity, but the other type of activity, they're again taking the help of the person working next to them. Then you realize that you need to bring in a new training system itself because your original training that you have been given to all the employees, it is in a insufficient or inappropriate or it is not updated and so on. That means you realize that there are seven, eight problems and all seven, eight problems can be solved if I come with one good quality management training program for five days to all my employees. If that can be done, then all the small issues can be sorted out. So instead of solving these smaller issues, try and solve the bigger issue that is giving a quality management training to all your employees. And if that is done, then you know you don't have to solve this smaller issues. They will all be taken care. That's what they're trying to tell you. Second, take solvable problems. Third, recognize participants. So those employees who will ultimately be working with the machine, if you want them to you know, solve the quality issue problems, then you have to come with some reward, some recognition program that look as of now, 5% of our finished products are defectives being rejected by customers. Now, if you bring it down to 2%, if you bring it down to 1%, you'll be given this reward or recognition, some amount or some incentive, some promotion, something like this. You need to bring everyone together. You have to ensure that employees also believe that maintaining good quality is not only helping the company, it is also going to help them. It is very, very important. Otherwise, any new idea you bring in, not just TQM, there will be resistance. We discussed in last two sessions also about this. Any new idea you bring in, people will first say no, because they have to do something else, which they have not been you know, uh, doing all these years. Now, unless you come with some reward, some recognition, they will not be interested in that. TQM principles, clear exposition of benefits, Total employee involvement, just now I told you, process measurement, involvement of all customers and contributor. Customer here doesn't mean the external customer who is buying your product. Uh, customer is even internal customer, one branch to another branch, one department to another department. Basically, a receiving department is a customer department. You are giving service to, say, department one is making a spare part. That will go to department two. Department two will assemble. Now department two is a customer department because they are buying from department one. So involve all of them. Elimination of irrelevant data, understanding the need of whole process, use of graphical and pictorial techniques to achieve understanding, establishment of performance specifications and targets, use of errors to prompt continuous improvement, use of statistic, statistics to tell people how they are doing. Basically, you need to have a dashboard, a matrix, more like KPI, to find out how much was the defective percentage earlier and how much is it now, and so on. Benefits of TQM, very important. Any question they ask on TQM, if they end the question with a sentence, something like this, company is planning to implement a quality management program, a total quality management program. Do you advice do you recommend list out the advantages and that is where this comes into picture increased awareness of quality culture in the firm this is the first basic quality that is missing in most of the indian organizations <clears throat> we believe in completing the task or we believe in completing the task well in time we want to complete the task as early as quickly as possible and move on that means our focus is to complete the task our focus is not to complete the task with quality as a factor. We never consider quality seriously. We consider it, but not with the required level of seriousness. So quality is always our third or fourth priority. It is never our first priority. First priority is to complete it. Second is to complete in time. Huh. But never you hear that our priority is to complete in time with best quality. That's the problem. 
number one number two commitment to continuous improvement even if you bring in a quality management program it becomes a one off event once in a year you say next seven days we will reduce wastage we will reduce defective production okay everybody will take it seriously everybody will do but that will be just a event for one year, one week or 10 days after that you will go back to your old style of wastage old style of defective production it should not happen a quality management program should <clears throat> bring in a continuous improvement and not a one time change greater focus on customer satisfaction the moment you start talking about quality understand ultimately you are talking about customer satisfaction there is nothing else who wants the best quality product the customer and most of the customers will be ready to pay higher price if the quality is good so without having a good quality company will have no scope to increase the price suppose there is a high inflation cost is going up when can you increase the price and pass on the cost to the customer only when you know that even after increasing the price people will buy your product and when will that happen when you give the best quality only then people will buy your product even when you increase the prices therefore to be in a position to avoid losses you should first start giving quality products and once you have quality products you will have all the right to increase the price so any time you want to improve the profitability you have an option to increase the price because your quality is so good people will not be <clears throat> worried to pay a little more for your products next greater emphasis on teamwork better control over process operation and cost okay next total employee involvement mark this important they haven't asked too many questions on this can be a question this time in exam total employee involvement this is part of tqm reviving the customer focus with total employee involvement oriented towards organizational goals will involve it is involve the following areas of thrust number 1 loyalty to the vision of the company through pursuit of tough and visible goals now you need to first align all your employees individual goals with company's overall goal the problem most of the time says employee is working in his own style in his own way or he has come from some other company he is working in that style that work style work culture that person is physically in this company but his style of working his target his goal his objective is not in sync with the overall company's objective so the first thing that you want to do you want to bring in a good tqm program in your company ensure that all employees their individual goals are in sync with the overall business objective recognition of satisfied customers and motivated employees as true assets of a company even the management should realize that look to take care of the customers we have to first take care of the employees and if we take care of employees they will take care of our customers management can't make customers happy unless the employees of the company they are happy <clears throat> first you have to keep your employees happy now how do you keep employees happy recognize them when they do good work when customers give a positive feedback stating that i purchase goods from this particular uh, showroom of yours and i am very very happy it's a very good product then you have a track who made that product you will have a barcode you will have the uh, you know entire audit trail from that you can find out who was that person who made that product give him the recognition give him some award maybe monetary or otherwise but ensure that employees are also getting motivated because management is ready to recognize that this customer's positive feedback is because of this employee mr a mr b you conduct meetings you conduct events once in a week once in a month where you talk about quality you give awards based on the best quality parameters not only maximum production not only in time production but even good quality production should also be one of your key metrics and employees should be motivated to get that award also and once five different employees get this award over five months then everybody starts thinking okay i can also reduce the defectives it is not only about producing more it is also about producing good quality my company recognizes even that once you give that confidence to them that for this company 
quality is as important as time, as important as number of units, then automatically you will see more and more employees willing to produce more qualitative products. Delegation of decision making to the point of responsibility by eliminating hierarchical tires of authority to allow direct and speedy response to customer needs. This is basically decentralization of decision making. Same thing, decentralization of management to make best use of creative energy of the workforce. Let employees come with their own ideas as well. Allow them to come with their own ideas. Now TQM, another problem is many times it becomes a top-down approach. The implementation of TQM becomes a top-down approach exercise wherein management will decide how we should achieve the quality and they create a document and then they ask all the employees to implement it. They say, this is our TQM document. All of you try to achieve these goals. But then you're not letting that employee, you're not letting that employee who is working with the machine to come with his own idea as to how we can improve the quality. And this is a big problem. You need to ensure that you identify that it is ultimately that employee who is standing next to the machine. He is the one who will be delivering the best quality. Management can only draft the policy. Management can only conduct an audit to check. But ultimately, every unit, every product, every day, it is that employee who will be delivering the best quality. So first ask him whether he has any ideas to improve the quality. So you have to delegate them. You have to decentralize the decision making with respect to quality management. It is not that CEO will go to some other factory for benchmarking activity. You send your workers to some other factory, they will understand it better. They will connect it better with their infrastructure in this company. And then they can come and say, you know, that we can also produce like that company, but we need these, these tools, these techniques, these material. If you can get this, we can also replicate what is the other company doing? So they know better than the management decentralize this decision of quality management practices. Don't make it a top-down activity. Let it be a bottom-up activity. Then only employees will be involved in everything. Otherwise, they will just feel that this is one more exercise where management will ask us to do some unreasonable things. Six Cs that are required. If you remember, this question was asked in May 2022 paper, commitment, culture, continuous improvement, cooperation, customer focus, and control. Easy, easy to understand. You can even explain. Four piece, people, process, problem, and preparation. Next. All of this is a discussion on quality, but is there a way we can measure the cost of quality. Yes, there are two broad ways and under each category, there are two subdivisions. So there are totally four cost of qualities. First one, cost of good quality, which is called quality conformance, compliance. This is classified as prevention and appraisal. Second, cost of bad quality. Yeah, and this is further segregated into internal failure, and external failure. This part of the chapter is very important. They can either ask a theory question or a practical question. In practical question, what they can do is they will give you a data. During the month, this, 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 this happened. Please classify this into, you know, good quality, bad quality, internal failure, external failure, and so on. That can be a question in examination. Yes, just a second. Yeah. Yes, here it is. First one, cost of quality, prevention, appraisal, and failure. In this failure, you have internal failure and external failure. Yes. First one, obtain information on the number of failures, defects, and quality related problems. Identify appropriate assumptions to process the quality related data. Analyze the impact of various resolutions that the available result that are available to resolve the quality related problems, allocate the resource to address the quality related problems, evaluate the impact. COQ, COQ can be computed in terms of efforts, that is number of hours, number of days, or in terms of money, that is what 
most of the times we do or in terms of percentage total cost percentage of revenue even to do in terms of percentage or to first calculate total cost of quality optimal coq is the level at which the total of all cost above are minimum basically we have to reduce the coq cost of quality but remember here as i already discussed there are two types of cost of qualities cost of good quality and cost of bad quality now prevention and appraisal internal failure and external failure these four types so the prevention and appraisal cost even if you spend a little more company will not be really unhappy because these are incurred to ensure that we always make good quality products prevention appraisal i'll take one simple example giving more and more and more training to employees so that they produce more good quality products now which company will say i don't want to spend on training one simple example of what is good quality spend more money to ensure that employees make best quality product who will say i don't want to if you say i don't want to give good training i don't want to spend more on training then you will end up spending more on bad quality if you don't give good training they will produce more defective items then you will have more internal failure and the worst is the most dangerous is external failure that is when that is when the goods are out and now they are with customer and customer calls you and says this is not the product quality that i wanted i'm not happy take it back now understand when you spend more money on prevention and appraisal even on internal failure only the company knows about all this what is internal failure department a produces it department b within the company they are doing a quality check and there itself they reject saying no 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 this is a bad quality item who knows about this rejection only the company's employee department a and department b only employees know outside customer outside world is not aware of this that means out of the two failures also internal failure is still okay but external failure is very dangerous because now you have a third party who is aware of this and more and more external failures understand more and more loss of customers to you and customers will just buy another product we all have nowadays very less tolerance when it comes to quality of the products because we are paying so much and then we get bad quality items anybody will be angry about it yes therefore basic objective is that the cost of quality is minimized but even when i say minimize if you spend little more on good quality that is still okay but bad quality cost should be as minimum as possible as under the relationship of coq or as under a small increase in prevention cost can lead to higher saving in appraisal cost just now i told you you spend more money in prevention then appraisal internal failure will come down if you do good internal failure sorry if you spend more on now uh, appraisal internal and external failure will come down if you spend more on internal failure cost also it's still okay because ultimately the external failure cost should come down you see this a small increase in internal failure cost can lead to reduction or avoidance of many external failure cost that means it is in this order spending more in prevention is okay next appraisal is okay internal failure is also okay but not on external failure a small increase in cost of compliance Com cost of compliance means good quality leads to great saving in cost of non compliance that is cost of bad quality hmm. approaches to cost of quality higher quality means higher cost this is the fundamental understanding that every company should first reconcile themselves with that you cannot expect best quality without spending money yeah if you spend very less amount and then say ours should be number one quality product that's not possible to have a good quality products understand you need to have good machines good quality raw material well trained employees well skilled employees the skilled employees will ask for high salary correct you need to have a good quality management team within the company internal failure prevention appraisal for all of this you need to have people within the organization you need to maintain your machines well to be in good condition to produce good output you have to keep your employees happy healthy safe then only good employees will stay with you even after you paying 
well they won't stay if you don't take care of these things that means all of this will involve high high cost and unless we pay high cost understand we will not get good quality so management should first take concern themselves with this fact that unless i spend money i will not get the best quality see this quality can be achieved only by spending more towards material labor and expense additional benefit obtained from such improved quality may not always compensate the additional cost incurred by the entity so quality cost need not be incurred this basic idea of management you know is not correct that the quality cost need not be incurred this understanding is wrong see it may happen that you spend more money in the first month you may not get the result immediately in the second month you shouldn't be discouraged you should continue to spend unless you spend money on good quality you will not have reduced external failures and understand you can't escape from paying for quality if you don't pay for prevention and appraisal you will end up spending a lot of money in internal failure what is internal failure cost you need to have more people in quality checking department before we dispatch goes okay in quality checking they reject lot of items then somebody has to rectify that that rectification again involves some usage of machine time some material some employee for all of that you again have to spend instead of producing 100 and then internal failure 25 rectifying that why don't you spend little extra money and produce such 100 that you have only two or three internal failure why do you want to spend less than then redo 25 once again you will end up spending same amount at the end so it is better to spend more on good quality than on bad quality any case study on cost of quality if they ask you to prepare a table and analyze your answer will have these four you know particulars that is nature of the item that is sorry list of the item and then you will make four columns whether it is prevention appraisal internal failure or external failure and then you do the total once you do the total i'll just show you the small table now once you do the total this is prevention appraisal internal external failure suppose these are the four numbers okay then you do the subtotal of these two prevention and appraisal write that number this and this write that number and then do the grand total of this also and then show the percentage suppose this is 10000 rupee this is 20000 rupee total is 30000 how much is the percentage of good quality cost that is 10 by 30 into 100 which is 33% and bad quality cost is 20 by 30 which is 66% you write a comment on this also as long as good quality cost is higher say this is 65 and this is 35 you can say this is satisfactory because company is spending more money on good quality and any time you spend more money on good quality understand this will help you in long run this will help you in long run you may feel like you are spending too much initially for prevention and detection but that is good that is needed that will help you in long run if you don't do prevention and appraisal forever in long run you will be spending more and more and more for internal and external failures next cost saving greater than cost of improving quality so understand the impact of good quality cost is you will save a lot of money again may be difficult to measure when i save money understand that is also like earning we have studied this money saved is money earned when you spend more money on training and development better quality of material better quality of machines good production techniques understand you are saving a lot there itself if you don't save no doubt you are spending for all of this but because of spending all of this you are producing lot of good quality products and with good quality products you are saving a lot to the organization and when you save understand the saving may be much more than the cost of good quality that is the training cost good material cost good machine cost all of that may come to 35000 and you might have produced good quality products may be worth 36000 right next one quality costs are relevant for being in business understand i'm just explaining this see here quality costs are those incurred in excess of those that would have been incurred if the product was produced service was rendered exactly 
right the first time. COQ comprises both direct tangible accounting and also indirect loss of market share, opportunity cost, etc. etc. I told a lot of the times you may not be in a position to measure this, but remember these are relevant. Now tell me if there is an internal failure cost, you will know that out of 100 units that are produced by the department is getting rejected. Out of 100, 20% is getting rejected by the internal quality control department. Now, each unit has to be rectified. That rectification will cost us 35 rupees. So you can measure it in rupee term. But sometimes, if that quality control department of your own company, if they also fail to recognize this, if they also fail to identify the bad quality products, then all the bad quality products will go out. Out means to customer and then customer will be unhappy. How do you measure this? How do you measure it in rupee term? What is the degree of dissatisfaction of our customers? Hmm. One way is, sir, they will reject, they will call back, they will send it, we will have a sales return. From sales return, we can find out. Correct. That customer's dissatisfaction, you can find out what is the effect of that on the company. But that customer, he has five friends, all five friends were about to buy your products. This guy bought first and now he had a bad experience. He will call those five friends and just tell them, no, no, don't buy this. I purchased it last week. I'm having a very bad experience. I've rejected it now. Any company, any product is okay, but don't buy this. Now you lost potential five customers. You will not even get to know about this. Correct? That customer's sales return, you will get to know. But he told five people not to buy. This you will never get to. So understand, even cost of quality is a relevant cost. Sometimes it is measurable. Sometimes it is not measurable. Even if it is not measurable, you should understand the seriousness that if 100 customers are unhappy, it is not just 100 customers. It is 100 plus another 500 potential customers who are unhappy. Maybe you are not able to measure it in rupee term, but you should know the seriousness when we lose 500 customers how big it is. Yes, last one is measurement. Many items of COQ are difficult to identify by formal cost measurement system. That's exactly what I told you. Hence, COQ is viewed as similar to an iceberg. The portion above the water level is only visible, but the portion below that, its size cannot be even visualized. Maybe much bigger than what you can see. Yeah. <clears throat> but it is difficult to put it in rupee term. The visible items of COQ, that is iceberg above the water level, include waste, scrap, reject, customer return, product recall, rework, inspection, and testing cost. All of this can be measured in rupee term. But the unhappy customer, you can't measure it. Friends of unhappy customer, you have no idea how big that circle can be. So a lot of the times, it can't be measured as well. Just a second. Yeah. Continuous process improvement. Continuous process improvement believes in encouraging every member of the company to continuously service, to efficiently serve their custom customers who may be either external or internal. I told you who is an internal customer already. The challenge is in promoting activities that continuously modify processes, procedures, task content, or process interfaces to achieve complete customer satisfaction, to reduce the cost, and to increase the quality. PDCA, market important. In simple, PDCA is plan, do, check, and take necessary actions. Six Sigma accuracy, this is connected to Six Sigma discussion that we already had. It means the process should be 99.9996% accurate. In other words, the process will have only 0 0.02 defect per million. In quality practice, Six Sigma, it means 3.4 parts per million, three to four defects out of 10 lakh pieces produced. And this is also indirectly connected to quality itself, correct? When you say 99.9996% good production, that means you're talking about failure of only three to four items out of 10 lakh. So in a way, 
these two are connected remember tqm and six sigma they can combine combine and ask a case study question yes controls in tqm process definition database quality manual quality manual is a document that explains to all the new employees what are the quality practices that company follows improved decision making control and continuous improvement and use of these reports once in a month you should also have a kpi matrix to assess the performance in connection to the quality of the products yes next one is business excellence model before i start business excellence model there was one question in the latest rtp yes TQM and cost of quality. Question number seven, K Automobile Group. Guys, I do not know why I did this mistake. It's all November 2022 RTPs, not May 2022 RTPs. I'm very sorry about it. <clears throat> there was one question on this before we continue with business excellence model. I think it's good if we can discuss the question and come back. I'm just opening the screen. Give me one minute. This is, yes. <clears throat> yeah, this is the latest RTP, November 2022. Let me open question number seven. Here we are. By the way, those who have attended my class, I hope you're able to recall, we have done the same question in the class. We have already completed this particular sum. Maybe company name is different, but the question, the same question we have already completed. Let me quickly revise this. K Automobile Group is among top 20 business houses in India. It has been founded in the year 1930 at the height of India's movement for independence from British. The group has an illustrious history, case footprint stretches over, stretches over a wide range of industries spanning automobiles, two-wheeler manufacturer and three-wheeler. Case headquarters is located in Hyderabad. Bike production is one of the segment of K Group. Management of K wants to analyze the following actual information for April. That means first para, nothing is important to you. Cost data, customer complaint center, equipment testing, warranty repair, manufacturing rework cost. Here everything is given on per hour and per unit basis. Per unit here means per bike. Volume and activity, bikes requiring manufacturing rework, warranty repair, production line equipment testing time and customer complaint center time. Basically you have to combine first table and second table to find out the rupee value. Example, bike requiring manufacturing rework, 3,200 bikes and in the first table manufacturing rework cost Fourth item, 228. That means if you multiply 3200 and 228, you will get how much is the cost of manufacturing rework. Same way. <clears throat> Bike requiring warranty repair and in the first table, warranty repair cost. Both are given. You will have to multiply this. Like this, you have to multiply all four to understand the rupee value. Next. Due to the quality issue in the month, the bike production line experienced unproductive downtime which costed 7,70,000. They've already given in rupee term. You can just copy this as it is. K carried out quality review of its existing supplier to enhance the quality level during the month at a cost of 1,25,000. Even this has to be considered. That means there are four items in the table and then there are two items after the table in the additional information. There are six cost items. So what is that they want you to do? Prepare a statement showing total quality cost. Advise any two measures to reduce non-conformance cost. Non-conformance means bad quality. They're asking you how to reduce internal and external failure cost. You notice they did not ask you how to reduce good quality cost. That is conformance cost. Nobody will ever ask you how to reduce good quality cost. I already explained this. No management will ask you how to reduce training cost. You don't want to spend on this. They will never. That means your focus will always be on 
internal and external failure that is cost of bad quality they are asking you what we should do now here they have said two measures uh, that means you can write one about internal failure and one about external failure before that in the first sub question they asked you prepare a statement showing total quality cost doesn't mean you just simply list out all of this in one go you have to classify them so you'll have a table particulars and amount cost of good quality in that prevention appraisal then cost of bad quality again internal failure external failure and then you do the grand total and then focus more on internal and external failure you have to write any two recommendations from your side to reduce such bad quality cost which is cost of non-conformance this can be maximum six to eight marks question they can even ask it for five marks okay can be a six to eight marks question i'll just scroll down to show you the answer part as well yes here it is exactly they prepared a table prevention appraisal internal and external failure then they did the total and then they have given two recommendations they might have explained little in detail your explanation will depend on the marks allotted if it's a 10 marks question then understand the first table will be only worth three or four marks the second sub question which will be worth six marks you write in detail if the question itself is for five marks then two three marks for the first table and one mark each for two recommendations accordingly you write only three to four lines point one and point two so how much you need to write that depends on the marks that they are going to allot so this was the only question from cost of quality in the latest article okay yes let me come back just a second yeah Yes. So this is the RTP sum I discussed. Let's come back. Here we are. Business excellence model. Business excellence is a philosophy for developing and strengthening the management system and process of an entity to improve performance and create value of stakeholders. Why do you need BE model to strengthen the internal functional and communication to cultivate strong ties with customers and incorporate into organizational culture to develop an organizational culture oriented towards quality. Again, this is connected to quality name itself tells you business excellence, whatever you do in that you need to be good at Just a second, I think there is a small problem with just a second, guys.
Mukesh, just give me one minute. Looks like. Something is wrong. Guys, when I share screen, are you able to see my video? When I share my screen, can you see me as well? Okay, just a second. Yes, I hope you're able to see me. I don't know for some reason I'm not able to see my own uh, video. Yes. Can one of you please message me either in Telegram or on WhatsApp whether you are able to see me right now because I am not able to check properly. Right now, can you see me? You can just message me on WhatsApp or on Telegram. Any of you please quickly. Okay, great. Hello, let's move on. Must be some issue from my end. If you are able to see that's all good then. Yeah. Why do you need business excellency mod? Number one, to strengthen the internal function and communication to cultivate strong ties with consumers and incorporate that into organizational culture to develop an organizational culture oriented towards quality. So business excellence is all about doing the same thing that we have been doing, but doing it in a better way. Business excellence. You are doing it do it in a better way. Try to achieve the best practices. That's when you call it as business excellence. You need to have good leadership, effective communication system, employee involvement, empowerment, motivation, creative culture, make the employees feel connected to the entity's philosophy. There are a couple of important models of business excellence. First one is EFQM philosophy, Baldrige criteria, for performance, excellence, and then Singapore BE Framework, Japan Quality Award, and Australian Business Excellence Framework. For us, the first and second are relevant, EFQM and Baldrige criteria. First is here, EFQM criteria. Read, fundamental concept of excellence. Basic principle that describe the essential foundation for any entity to achieve sustainable excellence 
that is adding value for the customer. Second, creating sustainable future, developing organizational capability, harnessing creativity and innovation, leading with vision, inspiration, and integrity, managing with agility, succeeding through talent of people, sustaining outstanding results. Guys, these things are very much you know, plain, simple theories. There is nothing much to explain. If you read all of this, this looks more like the uh, common points that you see in any organizational goal statement or goal document. So here the important part is EFQM talks about five enablers and four results. This part is important. Enablers, leadership, people, strategy, partnership and resource <coughs> and processes, products and service. Results, people result, customer result, society result and business result. What is the relationship between enablers and results? Results are caused by enablers. Important this part, the enablers and results, this part is extremely important. Any question they ask on EFQM model, you can explain this. There is a cause and effect relationship between what entity does and the result they achieve. Learning, creativity, innovation can help the enablers, thereby leading to improved results. That means only with better enablers, you can create better results. Radar, first understand the long form, mark this important. Result, approaches, deploy, assess, and refine. What is this? This is a logic assessment framework, management and evaluation tool for analyzing the performance. Here. I'm coming to this part. This represents the circular flow among result required, approaches to be planned, deployment of approaches, assessment and refinement of both approach and their deployment. It's a circle. What is the result that you want to achieve? Correct. For that, what are the approaches that you want to follow? How do you implement that deployment? And then again, you assess. And if it is not good, again, you come back. What is the result that you wanted to achieve? You re restart this whole cycle. Baldridge criteria talks about these basic principles, leadership, strategic planning, customer and market focus, measurement analysis and knowledge, workforce, process management, and business results. These are plain, straight, simple theories. So you can read it in detail after completing this video as well. So the only question from RTP, I already discussed that. <coughs> yes. Let us move on to another topic from which we have been getting a lot of questions. Yes, repeatedly, they've been asking the question on this particular topic, environmental, management accounting. You also please ensure that you spend enough time on environmental management accounting. In this revision sessions, I am focusing on all those topics where I know you won't spend much time on. Most of the students will solve a lot of practical sums on CVP analysis, standard costing, budget, pricing decision, relevant costing, transfer pricing, all of that is good. But there are these small topics Easy one, none of these are difficult, but because students don't even study, they will not be able to answer this, these questions in exam. Last three, four attempts, any question paper you pick, you will see one question on environmental management accounting. So this is small, this is very easy and very, very important. <coughs> Nowadays in every question, they're adding one last adjustment, which is related to environmental management accounting. So it may look like a CVP analysis question, but in that you will have one or two points related to environment. They will make that as a separate sub question and ask. Either there will be a direct question on environment or there will be a question combined with other concepts as well. But this is not a topic that you can take chance with. Do not leave this topic at any cost. Yeah. So let's begin environmental management accounting. What is this basic concept? Let's understand first meaning. EMA is a process of collection and analysis of the information relating to environmental cost 
for internal decision making, number one, B for product pricing, for budgeting, for cost evaluation, saving of environment related activities and seeks to control these expenses. First, we did not have any system to record environmental cost itself. Our traditional accounting that we all follow never gave an opportunity to record these expenses which are related to environment. So this is a branch of accounting which focuses only on collecting, analyzing, recording, interpreting the, the cost related to environment. Cost includes benefit related to environment. Where do we apply this? In investment appraisal, that is whether to do a particular project or not. When you are doing project planning, if you can recall in SFM and even in CA intermediate, you would have studied capital budgeting, investment decision. There we only consider business related expenses, business related inflows, initial cash outflow, and then year one, two, three, four, five, all the inflows, as long as the result is positive NPV, net present value, we say it's a good project to go ahead with, but there we never consider what is the environmental impact of this project. So with the introduction and evolution of this subject called EMA, now every company, when they have to take a decision on any project, they not only consider cost and benefit from regular business perspective, they also see from environmental perspective. By setting up this factory, how am I positively or negatively impacting the environment? Yes, next. In terms of product pricing, if we are spending anything because of environment, then should that cost be considered in my cost sheet? Should I add that to total cost? Should I charge it to customer? Even this has to be analyzed. Budgeting, cost evaluation, saving of environment project, setting qualified performance targets. So the matter has become more serious in last four or five years when it comes to environmental accounting. People were not that serious about it. Now, given the fact that a lot of companies, a lot of factories have cases pending in court against them, the cases being filed by public, stating that your company is violating environmental norms and some places it has gone to such a severity that they had to entirely close the factory itself. Therefore, now every company wants to consider even the impact of environmental factors while taking any decision. They don't want some other environmental problem to come up in future. While they're deciding whether to set up a factory in this location, in this district, in this place, if I want to set up the factory, don't only look at low cost material available, easy availability of labor, transportation convenience. You also see whether there are any impact on environment. If I set up a factory there, even that factor has been considered in last five, six years in every decision made. Using EMA, <clears throat> an entity can convert many environmental overhead costs into direct costs and allocate them to the product or service that are responsible for their incurrence. Yes, sorry, this is not a correct sentence. Advantage and disadvantage. Very important theory. They can ask question on this. Explain the advantage and disadvantages. More than disadvantages, I would say challenges in implementing EMA. First one, advantage. It evaluates the environmental cost or benefit. Second, it will integrate the best management accounting practices, thinking with best environmental management practices. So it's not only the accounting, it is accounting combined with best environmental practices. EMA seeks a better use of or to modify the sources of information and management accounting techniques and evaluate sustainability and environmental efficiency of an entity. EMA improves business revenues through higher reputation and premium price for products which meet the environmental need or concerns of customers. Nowadays, a lot of, lot of companies have come up with this. Their key selling point is that their product is eco-friendly. Their product is made out of 100% wastage and they create no new wastage. These have become selling points and there is a big section of the society which is now very cautious about buying products which are non-eco-friendly. They ask, is it made out of single-use plastic? Then people are rejecting such, project, such product. 
people are ready to pay a little higher amount not a very high amount that is one reason why in india companies which are charging high price for their eco friendly products are not being very successful because india is a price conscious market if a product is available at 25 rupee and you are coming with an eco friendly product if this is 25 it can be 27 can be 28 can be even 30 people may try but when the regular product is at 25 and you say ours is eco ours is eco friendly but the price will be 45 rupee many people will not like to buy at that high price and that is the reason why lot of companies are struggling in india to come up with this idea of making eco friendly product but because they are costly initially this will be costly obvious and they want to recover full cost from the customer items become very very costly and because of that they are not being very successful these days at least this will be there for another 4 5 years and then because of the higher scale because too many people start buying it more sales more production per unit cost will come down and then you will see better improvement in terms of pricing as well ema leads to cost reduction just now i told you through better monitoring of the operation redesigning of products and processes simple improvement leading to significant cost savings ema promotes corporate image obviously that adds to your goodwill ema focus may make the entity eligible to obtain certain government grants in certain situations governments are also now slowly coming up with incentives tax benefits etc where they say that look if you follow these environment standards then you will be given 5% rebate in the taxes this is possible even in india government also has to come up with more and more initiatives and companies should also take it seriously disadvantage more than disadvantage i would say challenges higher burden and the cost of compliance with regulatory requirement if government is involved they will then create a new problem they will bring in too many tough rules that you end up not setting up any new factory in the country itself nobody will be interested to set up a factory because once government is involved and if they come up with too many too many rules and regulations and they say all these rules are to be compulsorily followed and in addition to income tax audit in addition to statutory audit every company should get one environment audit also that will add to lot of cost correct that will defeat the whole motive then more people will be discouraged or they will find out you know second route an alternative route to hide all this information from the government increase the cost of clean up and fine on violation of any government environmental policy that's what happens when you bring in government to this then they will come up with an act a law to even punish those who violate we already have lot of such then that creates one more layer of problem to the business entities managers may allocate cost wrongly and make decisions that are bad for business and bad for the environment quite obvious relationship with tqm how is environmental management accounting is related to tqm you can mark this segment important they can ask you one combined question covering both tqm concept and ema concept tqm and ema are very closely linked since good environmental management is increasingly recognized as an essential component of total quality management entities pursue objectives like zero complaint zero spill zero pollution zero wastage zero accident which combine both tqm and ema principle these are both common yeah if you produce products having zero defects understand you are making good use of the resource you are not producing unnecessarily again and again A rectification of defective piece means what you have already produced and when you produce you have already created a bit of pollution and now after doing all the production if it is a defective item then you will end up producing once again or you end up rectifying the defective again you will create more pollution and at the end what is the value addition nothing the same customer who had paid for one unit he will not pay anything again what you produce is waste and that waste you will again throw again create an environmental problem so if you are in a position to create zero defect items understand your directly and indirectly reducing the pollution reducing the repetition of activities 
creating more value and using your resources for productive work than for non-productive work like rectification of defectives. The entity's information system should support such environmental objectives by providing feedback on both success or otherwise of the entity's effort in achieving such objectives. <coughs> Next, environmental cost. Environmental cost includes all of this fine, increased liability towards environmental taxes, loss in value of land, destruction of board values, loss of sales, customer boycott, inability to secure finance, loss of insurance cover, contingent liability, lawsuit, damage to corporate image. Some of these are measurable in rupee term. Some of these are non-measurable. Obviously, say for example, damage to corporate image, customer boycott. How can you measure it in rupee value? Yeah. Types. Environmental cost may be classified into internal cost or direct cost, costs that have direct impact on the income statement, external cost or indirect cost that are imposed on society at large, but not borne by the company that generate the cost in first instance. That is because of your practices, because of your company's practices, then people who stay nearby, their health condition is deteriorating. Now difficult to measure it in rupee term. And this is an external cost, correct? They may not know that this is happening because of your factory. There may be 10 factories. Now, which company will take the responsibility? Nobody. And how will you measure how many people are getting affected because of your company's emission of, you know, emission basically. So the problem here with environmental management accounting is this itself. Can we measure in rupee term Answer is no. Maybe half of the environmental cost you can. The other half you cannot. Discharge of untreated water to the nearby river. How will you measure the monetary impact of this? The river is polluted. How will you measure it in rupee value? Not possible. Hmm. But if the company is asked to pay some fine and penalty, that fine and penalty is in rupee term. That is measurable. Correct. But then you have created a long term negative impact on the society that water is not usable now because you discharge untreated water to that river, that river water is not usable now. How to measure it in rupee term? Practically not possible. So here is a small table, how a company can, you know, connect environmental cost with cost of quality. See this, meaning prevention cost, appraisal cost, internal failure and external failure. This is the same thing that we discussed in TQM. We are trying to connect the COQ, that is cost of quality, with environmental cost. What is prevention cost? <clears throat> Preventing adverse environmental impact. Guys, understand, do not get confused. These four classifications are as per TQM principle. We are trying to connect environmental management accounting to TQM principles. In TQM, the first one was prevention. Now, what is that company can do to prevent the adverse environmental impacts? Examples are given here, investment in pollution control equipment, defining environmental policies, environment friendly R&D, site and feasibility studies. By doing this, you can ensure that you prevent negative impacts that your entity may create on the environment. Second, appraisal. Activities to examine whether the product, process and activities comply with environmental standards or not. Continuously monitoring and testing improved system to prevent fine and penalty, regulatory compliance, contamination test, and conducting the audits. Next, internal failure activities that have been produced but not discharged into the environment, recycling the scrap, disposing of toxic material, back end cost, and other things. This I told you have generated a toxic material, but before disposing, is there a way? Is there a way you can, you know, using some machine, some technology, can you reduce the impact of discharging the toxic material into the nearby land mass or to the river? First of all, you're not supposed to do. Number two, if you say you're not supposed to do, where will that toxic material ultimately go? For example, untreated water, if it goes to the nearby river, that's a problem. Can you have a treatment plant? 
if it was 100 units of bad impact can you by spending money can you reduce the impact from 100 units to 30 units you can't bring it to zero everybody knows correct external failure cost activities performed after discharging waste into the environment cleaning up ha huh. i told you if you cannot have a treatment plan within your organization then you will discharge the water to the plant water to the <coughs> nearby river or the land mass now you have to spend money on cleaning up that river also because you are the one who spoiled it now you should spend on cleaning it up restoration of land to its natural state now you spoiled it by emitting or by you know dumping all the plastic and other wastage there now you go and ensure that you clean spend money through corporate social responsibility funds and ensure that the external failure is rectified you created the problem you spend money again to fix the problem identification of environment cost need why should we do this most of the environmental costs are hidden and how accounting entries are passed by the company they are right under the category miscellaneous expenses general overheads proper tracing identification and allocation of these cost is essential for following reason to identify the activity number 1 number 2 to reduce the consumption of precious natural resources to make an informed decision on the environmental effect to identify ways and means of controlling environmental cost that means we need to take this matter seriously we need to first identify second we should try and reduce it third we should take such decisions which are environment friendly don't set up a factory in a area where you know though material is cheap labor is easily available you know that if you set up a factory there it can create more damage to environment then sacrifice that go to another site where you may spend little extra money on material and labor but there the impact on the environment is less when you have to take a decision ensure that you take decision based on environmental factors not just on cost and revenue factors control over environmental cost number 1 to reduce the carbon footprint that is total greenhouse gas emission caused directly and indirectly by a person organization event or product in this case we are discussing about organization second to reduce the direct internal environmental cost which form a significant portion of total cost to reduce the cost of non compliance that is cost of bad quality with environmental regulation in the form of fine penalty etc if you don't recognize it at the initial stage and if you don't spend on good quality environment good quality prevention and appraisal then you will end up paying huge money because of fine and penalty later so you can't escape you can only delay environmental cost so why to get into the fine penalty case you know factory shut down and all of that that's a bigger problem why don't you spend more on prevention and appraisal for that you should first identify which are those areas where you have potential environmental cost if you see more possibility of failure cost better spend more on good quality prevention and appraisal reduce as much as external failure cost as you can yes all right so the next concept is theory of constraints i think it is better we will take up this in the next session because it's slightly a uh, bigger concept so in this session we have covered two important areas total quality management cost of quality number 1 and environmental management accounting both these are connected remember question can be asked tqm and environmental management accounting together please take both the topics seriously yes in the next session we will be discussing theory of constraints toc once that is done we will move on to target costing cost reduction aspects after that my plan is to discuss relevant costing summary of all important adjustments that can come in relevant cost and how to treat those items i have listed out all possible questions that they can ask so my next session will cover these three topics right chalo so we will catch up in the next session that will be session number 4 to cover these topics theory of constraint cost control and cost reduction and relevant cost analysis thank you so much